It's giving me Johnny Depp Willy Wonka, but I guess my two moods are Gene Wilder or Johnny Depp, but I'm still Willy Wonka! Hi, my name is Megan Batoon. I am... How am I? I'm getting ready to drive to the desert for a five-day hell week, almost. It is crunch time. I really need to finish this project and there's like no time for dilly-dallying. There's not even time for as much detail as I want to put in something. There's just not enough time or money or resources. It needs to be done. And it's like a wake-up call. We're gonna see what we can get done in five days. Here's the thing, I continually ruin all my clothes because I instantly wake up and I'm so excited to do something that I just start skim coating a wall or I'm freaking building something of wood or I'm painting all of a sudden. It's just whatever my mind wants to do because there's so many things to do in this project that I just do them all whenever it strikes me. All of my clothes are getting ruined and I'm not okay with that. So I'm gonna get dressed for work and luckily we're sustainable about it. If you're new here, ThreadUp is an online thrift store and consignment shop. Why does the washing machine need a solo? I don't get it. There's a search bar, so if I want something very specific, which is what I used for this, because I know that I need like a tank top and a jacket and shoes. Like I need very specific things for the job that I'm doing. So this was so helpful to have the search engine. I don't think I've ever really used a search engine before except for when I was shopping for the Netflix show. Much simpler to do that. I've done plenty of videos with ThreadUp before but this is interesting because they have a new feature called Thrift the Look. I understand that like ThreadUp has so many things, pages and pages and pages of different items that you can search through. And for me, I really like researching and I like <laughs> the little dopamine hits when I'm scrolling through so many pages and I like finally find that one piece. But I know that some people don't want that. Some people want to find the thing that they need quicker and easier. And this feature does that. So basically you go on the website, not basically, this is exactly what you do. You go on the website and they have a bunch of different people who have curated one look or their stylists have something and then you expand it and then it gives you a bunch of similar pieces, which is so helpful. I'm going to get dressed for the desert. If you vibe with it, you can go and shop my look. Save your wallet, save the planet, you get it. Okay, so yay, I'm excited. I wasn't planning on showing you the outfit I'm wearing now, it was just for comfort, but if you can deduce anything from this outfit, I like earth tones and I like rust copperies. As you can see, I'm redoing my closet and it is all ivories, greens, foresty colors, fall. You find what works for you and then you just do that. Oh my gosh. I'm happy. <laughs> this really worked out for me. And I hope it works out for you too. Wait, let me make it work out for you. I have a discount code. I'll put a link in the description box. You can shop my look. And if you use my code Megan, you'll get 30% off your first order. And it'll be easier because now that this feature exists, life just got easier in this one facet. Okay, so this is hilarious. You know, we're gonna do one piece at a time as I get dressed. This coat! I swear, when I saw it on the website, I think I said out loud, oh my god. Oh my god, it's even, how is it even freaking cooler? When you find a one of a kind gem, as much as I love earth tones, I really love when things are oversized. I don't like to feel constricted. I don't like to feel uncomfortable in any way when it comes to clothes. So I saw this dual tone London fog. It has a detached hood, which I actually did not know until this very moment. The estimated retail price of this is $214. I got it for $76.99. Oh my God. Okay, the hair instantly, I can't handle anymore. It's almost like I knew I wasn't gonna like my hair in this video because I got myself a little forest green beanie. So I can just pop that right on and say, what hair? Yeah, it looks like I have done. <laughs> the thing is when you get your bangs cut, you, just as a rule of thumb, are not gonna like them for like two weeks. And then, all of a sudden, they're amazing. However, it hasn't been two weeks since I got them done, so we're just gonna tuck them back. So, here I am, feeling great, loving the jacket. So, let's get pants on that I can actually work in because these, anything 
flowy around a saw, not gonna happen. We're gonna keep in the Dickies family and we're just gonna do some of these. It's always when you least expect it when I do a TikTok transition. Let's finish it off with some shoes. For the first couple of months working on site, I never wore closed toed shoes. Sometimes I didn't wear shoes at all. <laughs> My business partner started to get a little perturbed about it and I was like, thank you for caring about me. I will wear shoes. I chose some shoes that were closed toed, slip on, easy to wear, because I just can't be bothered with lacing something up. So I got myself some of these. Ooh. Damn, these are like brand new. These are slip-on Juicy Couture street shoes. They retail for $139. I got them for $85.99. And you know, I probably won't paint in these obviously, but like going to the hardware store and running my errands, going to source something, like these are just so simple to put on. So let's put them on. You know what? I've been detail-oriented my entire life, but the thing that I'm now being detail-oriented about is all of the things that will make me feel good and make my quality of life enhanced. Down to my socks, I want to love what I'm wearing because that really does change the way that you hold yourself, she says as she's bending down and <laughs> developing scoliosis. Need a belt. I'm remembering now that these are the pants that I made a makeshift ratchet strap belt. And now I lost my makeshift ratchet strap belt. I'm gonna find the ratchet strap belt. That's part of the outfit. Where do you think I put it? Probably with the other ratchet strap. It's already in the car because I already packed. We're gonna forgo the ratchet strap belt and this is our outfit. And I feel ready to tackle the 19 million tasks that I truly do have on my phone. Again, the link is in the description. If you want to thrift this look, use my code Megan at checkout. You'll get 30% off your first order. So check it out. Oh my God. Remember how I said I wasn't gonna paint in this? <laughs> Love that that's the first thing that I went to. Isn't it so fun having free will? Anyway, here's a tip for any time you're trying to paint anything, especially if you're using old paint or if you're painting furniture. I learned this the hard way trying to use a paint sprayer, but now I just use it for any time I'm using paint. Thin it and strain it. First, I thin the paint with Floetrol, which is this white liquid on the corner. Then as you can see, look how old this paint is. It needs to be strained 100%. So I have a, just a paper strainer. These things are pretty horrible, to be honest. I'm only using this because I'm working with such a small amount of paint. I wanted to install the baseboards, but realized that I have to paint the wall before I install the baseboards because baseboards is finishing. It's a whole thing. In the moment, I was just going with it. After two and a half hours of a drive, you don't really have your brain straight. So this is just the easiest thing to get into. I really didn't want to work with power tools right when I got in. So I'm just doing detail work along all of the windows, the baseboards, basically anything that needs a lot of attention and detail. This is what I had capacity for at the time. All of the windows that you see here have been replaced. They were about 50 years old. Some of them are just retrofit windows, but this glass block focal window actually was so interesting to learn how to do this. I installed this with my contractor. He showed me how you need to get creative sometimes to get what you want, especially as a designer and someone that's doing it themselves. This could potentially cost a lot of money and learning how to do it myself. One is really exciting for me because I like to see things to fruition, but also saving so much money on the labor. Since I was already painting and now am half dressed in painting gear, I wanted to at least get the first coat on this bookshelf. This bookshelf, I will show the full video whenever it's fully finished. This was the one that started as the most wobbly bookshelf in history. And we've come a long way. I always do a sand and a tack cloth run. This is where I become the painting Mr. Miyagi and I'm taking a sanding block and a tack cloth, which is basically like sticky cheesecloth and it's going to wipe up all of the smaller dust and particles that are left after the sanding. You're just wiping a clean slate. I have already primed this. Sometimes between coats, I like to sand with a really high grit sandpaper just to make it even better. With the amount of time that this took to get to this point, I am not going to cut any corners now. Then comes out my first coat of paint. This is a blue that I had chosen previously, thinking it was a really pretty blue. It is a really pretty blue, but you know what? I will fess up to this mistake. I wasn't really thinking about the entire picture, which is a huge no-no when it comes to interior design. I was just thinking about getting paint on the bookshelf. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. So after painting the entire thing, I realized that I did hate it indeed. So I brought two items that I had and held them all together with the paint color. That's gonna be the base color of the wall, just so I could see the relationship to each other. I really wanted something that would contrast with this light peachy pink. So back to the drawing board, I'm just sketching out my bookshelf because sometimes I don't wanna take out my computer and do a whole SketchUp model. I just need to make a decision quickly and I love my bullet journal for this. This 
this is generally how I design. I just sit and stare and kind of do that. And then I close my eyes and I feel it. And then I finally get to sketching. So I decided I'm gonna do a cobalt color for the main, the accent color, a bit of a sky blue, and the pop, a buttery golden sunset. Filling in my drawing with the respective colors, how I see them. Again, this project is super playful, so that's why you see the yellow spheres at the bottom. When I show the entire bookshelf build, you'll see how I made those, but for now, we're just trying to fix our mistakes. With my new revision of color, I went to Home Depot and got a sky blue. I'm starting in the corners with a short brush, just because whenever I go with a roller, I can't get into those crevices, so I always start with the corners just to make it easier. Then I take my roller and cover all my flat spots. Again, I've strained and thinned this with Floetrol. Now that I'm using a lot more paint, I actually use pantyhose, which is a tip that my business partner's dad, who is an ex-painter, told us. And that really saved me a lot of time and hassle. So thank you. pretty this cobalt is oh my gosh so again i'm starting with the most detail centric places which is my favorite because i can just get lost in thought and really process what i don't have enough time to whenever i'm running from place to place or project to project the next day i'm ready to do some a little bit more intensive labor so i'm gonna tile my first shower I was a little intimidated to do this to be completely honest, but every time I get scared that I'm not gonna do something right, I remember that, oh, people have always made houses before, people have been homeowners before, people that don't have degrees in architecture or contract work, they've done things themselves. And so I get a little less scared to do something because I know that people have done it in the past. Why can't I do it? I will say that before attempting this, I did watch a fair amount of YouTube videos and talk to my contractor about some tips. So I know that I need a one quarter inch gap between my first tile. And I'm just taking some scrap tempered hardboard that looked like it was a quarter inch, turns out it was. And so I'm just using that as my spacer. I was also told to extend my tile past the waterproofed hardboard onto the drywall just because of the splashing of water. It just helps it be a little bit more protective. So I'm marking where the tile will end and just seeing if that's level. Because in my experience, the more that I work on houses, the more I realize that a lot of things aren't perfect, which also makes me less intimidated because it's already not perfect. So what do I have to lose? I'm not gonna make it less perfect. So once I feel good about all of that, I am gonna mix my mortar. I like to start with water first and then add thin set just because I can control a little bit more that way. The consistency you're looking for is a pancake batter. Also, I would never do this if I didn't have this attachment. It would just be the biggest waste of time. So once my thin set is at a good consistency, I'm using my trowel and pushing it onto the wall. Again, this is my first time tiling a shower, so don't ask me why I started here. Makes absolutely no sense. But this is all a learning process, and here's where I figure out that I shouldn't do that. I realize that I don't actually know how far the tiles are going to go because the grid is actually bigger than where I need it to end. So once I start laying from the inside corner, I realize that I only need four rows. So I cut the excess off. Take all of the thin set that I had already put on and start on the inside. So I'm getting my thin set on the wall and I'm using the opposite side of the trowel with the notches in order to make some grooves. This is the way that the tile gets adhered onto the wall. It needs the grooves so that when you apply pressure onto the tile, that the grooves collapse and it seals it. If you ever tile a shower, you will hear it. Once you push in, you hear the little air bubbles collapse. That's what you want. I'm just triple checking the level. And then honestly, you continue to do this. I will say that the first row takes forever because it's so vital that it is straight. So you can't be too careful or finicky with the first row at all, in my opinion. In my opinion, with my one shower that I've tiled. <laughs> Thank you. 
So after the first row, I wanted that to set before I laid anything else on top, just to ensure that it was always going to be straight. So since I had leftover thin set already mixed, I went into the guest bathroom where I wanted to replace this old window. And before I replace it, I have to demo it. So I'm taking off the door and just trying to take it off piece by piece, which is the most convenient way. But of course it can't be the most convenient thing. So my only resort was to break the glass. Yay, I'm wearing PPE, how happy is everyone? I start taking the glass out piece by piece until all I've got left is this aluminum frame. I'm taking a pry bar and a hammer and trying to just leverage off the frame itself. I don't know how this is attached. You always find interesting things when you start demoing and you're like, oh, that's how they did this, that's kooky which also makes me way less intimidated. So I start pry barring the frame off and then I'm seeing that the entire drywall is coming out. So that's not going to work. I had to take to the saws off. Anytime you're using a saw, it is important to use the right blade. If you use the wrong blade, it's just gonna completely deteriorate your blade and it's gonna be a waste of money. And sometimes these blades aren't cheap. So making sure that I have a metal blade for my saws all, I just hold it real still and breathe, honestly. Then with my remaining thin set, I start spreading it with my putty knife. It's really like icing a cake. The first block I'm starting in the center just because I wanna make sure that I know what my center is. I measure the opening of the window seeing that it's 24 inches and that my halfway mark would be 12 inches or one foot. So I'm just sliding over my block so that the center of that is at 12 inches. And then from there, I'm redistributing all the thin set in order to hold my other blocks. This is a guessing game, really. Anytime I'm doing a project like this, I don't know what the solutions are going to be. It's basically like you have to problem solve as you're doing it, which is one of my favorite things about doing DIY. The main things that I'm checking for here is one, enough adhesion, two, that everything is level horizontally and vertically, and making sure that there is enough thin set in between all the blocks because that is what is going to hold this window together. And I just continue to do that on top. I have a lot of working time with the thin set that I got, so it is really time consuming, but I would prefer having more time than not enough and having it solidify in a not perfect way. And when I say perfect, I mean good enough because there is no perfect in building a house. I'm installing it from the front facing view, but making sure that I'm going in the back because there's so much sludge that drips down that you must take care of because it will dry and it will look horrific. The next morning I'm back at the shower and this is something that I waited the next morning to do because I have never used a tile saw before and the tile saw bit that I had isn't big enough for this shower valve. So here's me trying to reverse engineer where I'm going to make an opening for the valve. Again, I'm just problem solving in real time. I, this is the best I could come up with, okay? So I start cutting the tiles that I know aren't gonna be necessary in order to accommodate that. And one of my favorite things about building and doing projects like this is that no one actually really knows how the sausage gets made after you put your finishing pieces on. So here's me trying to see what is possible to take out because when I have the shower plate on, you're not actually gonna see much of the tiles underneath. So I'm realizing that in order to not have all of my bottom tiles collapse, I have to take out one of the bottom tiles so that it can have enough space to allow the tile spacers in between each tile sheet. Again, it does not have to be perfect. It just has to be correct. And the main thing that you're looking for when tiling is just to have thin set everywhere necessary in order for it to adhere and to make sure that there's grooves anywhere that you're gonna be putting tile. And then I found this 
fun little doodad at Home Depot. I've never seen this in any other tile video. No one's mentioned this before. I just stumbled upon it and I love it. It is a thin set remover so that you don't have this glue in between your tiles and it doesn't dry that way. Obviously we're gonna grout it at the end, but it just makes it a little bit easier and less of a headache. Then I continue to tile the entire thing all the way up until the shower head, which is when we need to use a tile saw. Before we cut anything, we have to know where we're cutting something. So I'm drawing a vertical line where my first tile sheet ends so that I can measure the distance from the side of the second tile sheet and where the hole needs to be to fit over this shower head valve. So once I have my dimensions, I go down to my tile. I translate them onto the tile that I'm going to install. Once I have a pretty clear cross section, I'm bringing in my diamond hole saw bit. And once I center it, I just trace around so I know where I'm gonna put my guide. This is the guide it comes with and it makes it so much easier because without this, I would have to freehand it and go at an angle and I don't wanna do that. So I love this because it has an adhesive on the back. So it sticks and holds right where you need it and acts as a template. You can't see it here, but it also has raised guidelines so you know exactly where your cross section is. So the diamond blade needs water in order to cut well. I'm just using a handheld drill and every five or so seconds, I'm dipping it back in the water just so it makes it easier to cut. And then we have our hole. And the moment of truth. Oh, when things just work out. Oh my God. This made me so happy. So happy. So proceeding with typical protocol, smushing it into the wall, spacing it out, and then finishing it up with my very first ever shower. Yay, we tiled the shower and now we are in urgent care. Of all the things that you've learned in this video, the one that you should really remember is to listen to your body, that what you get done in a day is more than good enough, and to stop going so hard in the first week of 2022. I'll be here. I hope you have a great day with the rest of your day, and I will see you the next time I do. Bye.